Welcome back to Brave Birds DFS, one of the best places for PGA, NFL, MLB, and NBA news, and of course, DFS. If you don't know by now, I'm Walt. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe to my channel. So I am feeling so much better. Last weekend, I was getting over a mild case of COVID. It wasn't like that 2020 kind of COVID, but it was still enough where it made it difficult to do these videos. All right, so let's just jump into the Millie Maker this week. Although there are a lot of good contests this week that have nothing to do with the Millie Maker. Just depends on you know how much you want to do for entry. What are your goals? But we're just going to stick with this for right now. So it's a 13 game slate. We had back to back weeks with 10 game slates, but we have fewer teams on by. So the first thing I always have to do is look at the over under and the spread because it gives me a good idea what the fact cats in vegas thinks gonna happen this weekend they're not always right but it still points me in the right direction so a few games that stand out are the falcons going to play the bucks uh the tenor of this game has just totally changed we know that um evans came up a little lame during the game after getting his 100th uh receiving touchdown of his career but you know unfortunately for the bucks uh godwin was injured with like 65 seconds left in a game that it was like a less than one percent chance they were going to win that being said the over under is still 45 and a half so we have a very interesting week so outside of the monday night football game all of the games are expected to have a over under in the 40s we don't have any games like last week where uh you had a 51 and a half i think for the falcons versus uh seattle and definitely uh the lions versus vikings but we still have some scores that stand out we have the eagles and the Bengals, uh 47 and a half with the uh Bengals being two and a half point home favorites uh, what else stands out a little bit the the cardinals and dolphins and obviously the big thing with this game is tua coming back i know a lot of us have some mixed feelings about that but uh, from a DFS perspective, assuming he is really back and ready to play, obviously this adds, you know, a lot of value uh, for uh, Tyreek Hill and Waddle and just the rest of the Dolphins offense. Um, we have Jets Patriots, no surprise, 40 and a half, low over under, Jets seven point road favorites. And then the game of the week, I mean, this is kind of insane, the game of the week, from a uh, over under perspective are the Packers going to Jacksonville to play the Jags. So 49 and a half with the Green Bay Packers being four and a half point road favorites. Then we have the Colts and Texans, 45 and a half Saints and Chargers. No surprise uh, with the low uh, over under the, the Chargers won a game just kicking field goals last week. And we know, unfortunately, from a DFS perspective, the Saints have run into a lot of injuries. And then we have the Bills Seahawks, 46 and a half. No surprise, the low over under for Panthers Broncos. And then we have 41 and a half Chief Raiders and then interesting game Bears and Commanders. And then we don't care at this point about Cowboys and 49ers because that is the Sunday night football game and it's not on the slate. All right. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you my thoughts for all the positions and then I'm going to explain my thought process lineup. So when it comes to the quarterbacks, first thing I looked at this week are who have been the best three quarterbacks over the past uh, four weeks. And so the best quarterback over the past four weeks from a DFS perspective has been Lamar Jackson, and he is the most expensive quarterback. But as we've seen, uh, as a matter of fact, you know what? Let's pause this. Let's actually look back at last week and see that winning lineup. And so we can pull that up and we can see that uh, Sam Darnold won with a salary from a in the quarterback position of only 6,200. So and it really depends on what contest you ran, because in some contests, Geno Smith was the winning quarterback. So as I talked about last week, having that value quarterback it gives you that opportunity to you know stuff those studs into your lineup because because this person picked sam darnold they were able to put jefferson in their lineup who got 21.4 fantasy points they were able to put amara st brown in their lineup who got 28.2 points and even to a lesser extent have gibbs who had 35 points and a very expensive defense in the Bengals with 30 at 3300 who got 15 fantasy points so it doesn't work out all the time but the majority of the time so far this year just barely the majority of the time paying up for a quarterback uh has not led to 
you winning a GPP in some of the larger contests. And then you have Kareem Hunt, who I mentioned last week. I was like, even though uh, from a Vegas perspective, his game script wasn't the best. Uh, once the um, once the Chiefs got up, everything went towards the Chiefs. And uh, that's how Kareem Hunt had that great day. Gibbs was in the game of the week. And also he was helped a little bit because for part of the game, Montgomery was injured and came off the field and he was the only running back. So they added a little, a few more attempts and a little bit more time on the field with that, uh, that, that injury up for Montgomery. And then, I mean, Jefferson, Jefferson and, and St. Brown, they're studs. So very interesting. Um, we have more and uh, Njoku, who benefited from Amari Cooper being traded to the Buffalo Bills. And also, they benefited, unfortunately, from Deshaun Watson getting injured. Uh, they, the quarterback change kind of helped them a little bit. So it's going to be interesting to see with those two things happening, how that's going to impact them moving forward. And then, I mean, hard. Let's talk about hard, man. I mean, let's talk about it. Top five sus name, by the way. But let's talk about it. Sometimes you just get lucky we got to accept the fact that there are so many ways to make lineups whether you're paying for them whether you're getting them for free whether you're looking at content creators uh, like me and others but sometimes you just get lucky you just get lucky because there's there's no way <laughs> and, and, and you can see he was drafted by 0.9 percent of people there's no analysis that say you know what i need to start harming here but it's okay we can accept the fact you know i talk about it a lot of times with my golf videos there's some luck and gut involved in dfs so i mean sometimes you just get lucky with hardman and then with the with the Bengals, i don't overthink defenses but they were able to like i said pay up for the expensive defense because they had some uh, lower price set lower salary players in their lineup all right let's jump back to this week so yeah talking about this week so the best quarterback over the past four weeks from a dfs perspective has been lamar jackson has a tough matchup but we can see we can look at these game logs and we're not surprised by this so we know that if you pick lamar jackson you're gonna have to make some some decisions further down the line and once again you're gonna if you're gonna do multiple lineups you can have a lamar jackson lineup it's all good and then the second best quarterback over the last four weeks has been jordan love in the game game of the week in the matchup i mean 32nd against you know quarterbacks i mean jordan love is in a good situation both uh how he's been playing lately and also uh the matchup that he has now very interesting the third best quarterback over the last four weeks is baker mayfield and what we know he he did that he has a good matchup, but it's going to be curious to see how things are going to work out uh, with the injuries that uh, the Bucks have. But he has been the third, the third best uh, quarterback. And then we have um, we have Burrow, who's been playing well lately. We have Golf, but I'm going to actually go because once again, I like to find those value quarterbacks. I'm going to go to the sixth best quarterback over the past four weeks. And that has been Caleb Williams. He has been trending in the right direction. He is in a good matchup. He is in a good game script. Um, we can see that he's had at least 23 fantasy points in three out of the last four games. All right. So a running back sticking uh, with the uh, sticking with the Bears. We're going to go with Swift. Swift has I mean, as Williams has gotten better, Swift has gotten better. We can see that he's had at least 20 fantasy points in three straight weeks. So I really like Swift. Another person that we just we can't we can't run from uh, at the running back position position is Mixon. Once again, I've already apologized. I told you all I was salty because last year he ruined my fantasy football lineups. But I mean, we just can't run from this guy. I mean, look at these games logs um at least 29.4 points in three of the four games where he has been healthy so definitely uh definitely like mixing walker you know as he's questionable he's supposed to play assuming he's gonna play he is in a really uh good matchup and who else do i like and then b john robinson i mean just had a coming out game uh got the kind of volume that we've all been expecting for the past two years and we can see in this last two games he's gotten at least 25.5 fantasy points you know when it comes to running backs i'm always looking for you know the injury value players but i mean we have a really healthy 
the week this week. So that's kind of a little interesting. So a wide receiver, one of the best wide receivers um, in the past, over the past four weeks has been Thomas Jr., Brian Thomas Jr. for the Jags. And once again, he's in the game of the week. Uh, so we can look and see these game logs. We can see he's had at least 21.9 fantasy points in three out of the last four games. Another person can sit to consider, and there's a caveat, Josh Downs. He's been a top 10 wide receiver, but I know what you're going to say, and I know the same thing in drafting is saying the same thing. He did most of this with Flacco. So the question, and we saw when when uh, Richardson came back, his numbers just plummeted. But he's the same wide receiver. He didn't eat, nothing changed with him, and that's just a one game sample. But I gotta bring it to your attention that Josh Downs is a really, really good uh, uh, wide receiver uh, from a value perspective, assuming that he can get connected with Richardson like he had with uh, Flacco. Another person who's been good and in, in, he got injured at practice on Friday. Higgins has been playing really well lately so assuming he actually suits up out there we can see that he's had at least double digit fantasy points including that 29 point game in four straight games and my final person i'm going to kind of target on the wide receivers london you can see in a really good matchup look at drake london six straight games with at least double digit fantasy points including 18 19 and 36 games in the last three games so really like drake london all right, so let's go to the tight ends. And Ingram, since he's returned, has looked really good and has a good matchup. He's caught all of his targets so far. He had a 22-point game, and then he had an 18.5 uh, fantasy point game. So you see I keep targeting this matchup of the week, and he did that without scoring a touchdown. In Joku, I mentioned him last week, and once again, he has a good matchup. Uh, we'll see with the quarterback change, how that'll impact things, but just has a good matchup, has 23.6 points, no Amari Cooper. So definitely a big part of the offense. I mean, Kraft. Kraft has a good, yeah, I keep going back to this matchup. I'm sorry, it's the best matchup of the week. So we got to go back to Kraft, who's had four touchdowns in the past four games. He had a touchdown last game. He missed the game with no touchdown, had the two touchdown game, and then had the one touchdown game. So 18-24 3.5 and 12 fantasy points so definitely going with craft all right so for defense i mean i'm not gonna get cute with this we gotta go with those broncos playing they're gonna be playing the panthers we know andy dalton was injured in a car crash uh this week he's okay but he, he's injured enough where they're gonna try to they're gonna put bryce young out there again and we and we have about 15 to 20 games of uh of tape on how things work when Bryce Young plays uh, in the National Football League. So definitely like the Broncos. But once again, when it comes to defenses, there's so much randomness with defenses that, I mean, you could save some, I could see you going down and, you know, saving some value like Falcons. I mean, maybe maybe pick the Falcons defense. There are a lot of injuries with the Bucks. You wanna you wanna save on that. The Patriots uh, defense going up against the Jets. I think Aaron Rodgers is uh, is questionable. So there's some defenses down here if you really want to uh, kind of save. Look at the Bears. I mean, Daniels is Daniels going to play? He's trending towards playing. But if Daniels uh, isn't going to play, uh, the the Commanders are a totally different team. All right. So putting all that into the pot. Here is my thought process lineup. I'm going with Caleb Williams, going with Swift. I'm not getting cute with Mixon. And then we're going to have Thomas, London, Downs. I'm just crossing my fingers that he can get that connection that we talked about that he had with Flacco. And then we have Kraft. And then we're going to have Strange. I got to fit him in because of all the studs I have in here. Strange has been a pretty good uh, tight end. We know that uh, he kind of fell off the taste. Obviously going to get less He's going to be less involved in the offense now that uh, Ingram is back, but still someone you can sneakily put in there. And then once again, I'm not getting cute, cute. Excuse me. I am putting in the Broncos defense. So let me know your thoughts. Feel free to leave any comments, but otherwise go out there and win that guap.